Hello everybody, it is Amanda so it's time for another Power Query video. In today's Power Query video, I'm going to talk about if statements. They are probably the most common transformation in Power Query. So there are a few things that you need to do and some tricks. And that's what we're going to cover in today's video. Let's get started. Okay, so let's jump into the video right away. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to write if statements. I'm going to show you um, how to avoid errors. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks. So anything that you need to know to write if statements like pro. What we have here is a very simple table. It has a product, product ID, sales and origin. And uh, we're going to do some if magic. How about that? So first thing, how do you write if syntax? If you go to add column, custom column, that's norm the most common way to write if syntax. You might do it perhaps the most common mistakes that people do it like in Excel. So let's say that we want if origin is Spain, then Europe, else non-Europe, right? And right off the bat, this thing is going to tell you, mm -mm -mm, you can't write it like that. You can see that it says nothing clear, but it says it won't, it won't let you uh, write it. The thing is because the syntax is incorrect. This is the Excel syntax to write for a query if statements you need to do it in another way. Let me show you. There is a trick so you don't have to remember how it is done. And I'm going to share it with you. If you go here to add column and you use conditional column instead, and here you put continent, and then you put if origin, I mean, you, you just use the user interface, right? And then Spain, Europe, and then here non-Europe, right? This thing will write the code for you. You can see it here. If origin is Spain, I don't have any intelligence on, sorry for that. I should probably have it. If origin is Spain, then Europe, otherwise not Europe. And then it creates a column with everything that we want. I say, okay, now you see the syntax that you need to use, right? It is text instead of this comma. It is a pity actually that they haven't used the same syntax as Excel, even though I find this more intuitive. But you know, Excel users, everybody knows Excel and if condition, so it would have been easier. Um, now, let's say, okay, we have Spain and Sweden. Sweden is also a Europe country. So how do I add another country? And you can actually add it here. If you go into the conditional column uh, user interface, you can add a clause and then you can do origin equals Sweden. Oh, sorry. Let me finish that. Sweden then Europe, right? And then it will write it. But there is another way to do it. I'm going to show you. If I delete that, you can write it here. So it says if origin Spain, or this is an or, origin Sweden, then Europe, and then it does it, okay? So if you do like that, it will break the user interface and you will get the custom column, just so you know. Uh, but you have the both ways to do it. And you can use or, you can use and. So this allows you to do multiple conditions. Now, there is no country that is Sweden and Spain. So obviously you won't get the right solution, but you can say, for example, if origin is Spain and a product you can use from different columns is A, then Europe. And you see, guess Europe. So you can combine this as any, any way you like so with an or or. Now let's say that you want to say if origin is Spain and product is not product A. So to do product, not product A, you do like that, 
right? And then it will say, okay, that is product A, so that's not Europe 2. Now, if you write it like this, you're going to get an error. And the error says that you can apply not operator to type text, okay? So you have to use the non-equal sign for that. If you get an error and you, you still want to keep that, for example, sometimes you do actually if statements on large tables and sometimes you'll get the right answer, but then in some places you will get errors for things like that. So how do you get rid of the errors? You could do obviously another step and say remove errors or replace errors by, or in the if the statement you can actually do try and then you do otherwise no. And you see, the error disappears in the same step, which is actually quite useful. Okay, let's move on. Let me show you something else. We go back to the original if Spain, then Europe, else non Europe. Now, we're going to create a new one that if product ID begins with D, then it's a dairy product, otherwise, it's not dairy product. How do we do that? You go to a column, custom column, you need to have a custom column for this. And you do if, then it was product ID. And you have to do starts with. There is a Power Query function called text start. I think it starts. I have M IntelliSense disabled. With, and then you put what it should start with. Then dairy else non dairy for example and there you have it so you can see you can put next functions and functions within the if statement to get exactly what you want you can do it in the beginning you can do it also in, in the end for example you say oh we're going to change the or the coding for the dairy products you see there is only three numbers it should be four so we're going to add one to the last digit so how do we do that we go to custom column and we do exactly the same thing if text starts with and then we put product id that means if it's dairy now we have a dairy column so we could have used dairy column anyhow probably it's more efficient then we're going to do something. We're going to get the product ID and then we're going to concatenate it with one, for example. Else, product ID. So don't change anything. And that will give us the new product ID formatted. Okay? So you can do as much or, or as complicated if statements as you like. This is really, really powerful. There's one more thing I want to show you, and it has to do with numbers. We're going to categorize sales, so we want to bin them. We want to have a group for all products that have sales less than a thousand, less than ten thousand, a hundred thousand, a million. Okay, how do we do that? We go again with conditional formatting. This time, is there is no nested M functions in there, so we're going to use the conditional column. So conditional column, and I said here, if sales is less than, oh, it's text, sorry. <laughs> Let's put this as a number. That's good that you saw it. Uh, change it as a number, because this is a smart and then we'll understand that uh, you can't have less than. So sales is less than a thousand, and then we're going to have one bucket that is called less than a thousand. And then I like to do them all at once because I think it is faster. And then you click on the number on the letter and it will take you there. If you have long list, it's quite useful. So you go there, it press S, takes you to sales. And then is less than, is less than, is less than. And then a thousand, ten thousand, and then less than. And then a hundred thousand less than and then a million, right? 
less than 1 million and then otherwise it is bigger than 1 million okay and as you can see we get for the let me close that so you see everything so 300 is obviously on the thousand buckets on the 10,000 buckets it is doing it correctly now look at this if I change the order of these and the reason why this works is because of this if I change the order and I put the 10,000 first so it evaluates 10,000 and then 1,000 you see that the 1,000 disappears and it's because the if statement works the same as switch it goes in the first one and it goes through the list and if it finds something it evaluates it and it doesn't look at it again then it goes to the second statement so it goes through the list and it says okay which ones are less than 10,000 and then we have this is 10,000 10,000 this is 10,000 this is 10,000 we get these two right and then we go to which one is less than a thousand this is already evaluated so you won't evaluate it again which means that this bucket will not get looked at so you have to put it in the correct order let me show you you see that it changes to a thousand so it is an important thing to know and it's a very useful trick when you're for example building data so this is the basics and the most important things you know about the if statement let me know in the comment box if you want to know anything else about if statement i will make another video otherwise i hope you enjoy it and now you're creating if statements like a pro in power query how about that okay so i leave you for now i will see you again on wednesday as always so until then take care and bye bye